Let's get to Wimbledon Gate because there's a big scandal brewing as we run towards the Wimbledon Championships because there will be no ranking points now to play for after the Wimbledon organisers decided to ban Russian and Belarusian athletes. Well, Frenchman Lucas Poul became the first top player to declare he won't play in the world's most prestigious tennis tournament. Uh, Naomi Osaka has probably come forward and said she may not either, saying it would be pointless. I'm sure someone else would probably take her place, but it's clearly a tournament now in turmoil. It's kind of like, I, I don't want to say pointless, no pun intended, but like, <laughs> like I, 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 I'm the type of player that gets motivated by like seeing my ranking go up or like, you know, stuff like that. I think the intention was really good, but the execution is kind of all over the place. Well, joining me to discuss all this is 18 times Grand Slam tennis champion Martina Navratilova. Martina, thank you for joining me. We did discuss this a few weeks ago, didn't we? And, and things have really escalated yeah. now where it's becoming this massive furore. Uh, I've got to say, since we last spoke, I think I shared your view then that punishing individuals uh, seemed the wrong way to punish Putin. Um, but I then interviewed Vladimir Klitschko, the, the Ukrainian boxer, last week, and he said this to me. The war is going on. They cannot participate in the next Olympic Games. They cannot participate in any athletic events because this war is represented by Russia. So Atlas representing Russia. And there is definitely connection. I've got to say that when I listened to him speaking so powerfully, he did slightly sway me, I've got to be honest, because I, I can just imagine a situation where a Russian tennis star ends up winning a, a Wimbledon trophy and, you know, has it presented to him or her by the Duchess of Cambridge, for example. What a PR bonanza that would be for Vladimir Putin right now. And something that we, I just don't think as a country, could tolerate that kind of scenario unfurling. So I'm not sure that Wimbledon have had a lot of choice given the pressure from the UK government to do this. Sure, I, I understand so much where uh, the players uh, and, and people in the Ukraine are coming from 100%. I can so relate to this. Um, I am thinking there's a big difference between team events and indiv individual events. And also you have Russian and Belarusian players on team sports. For example, Alexey Ovechkin playing for the Washington Capitals in the NHL. Not a peep out of anybody that he should not be playing mm. for, for, for that team. Plus he's a massive supporter of Vladimir Putin on top of that. So you have a player like Rublev who has uh, dis disowned the war. He had written on the camera, no to war, yet he can't play. Um, so it's just, it, you look, there is no winning situation here. And now you, you have a controversial decision. If it was the right thing, I think we would not be so ambivalent about it um, both ways. Um, mm. So it's, it's just no good way out of it. Bad situation, of course, horrible situation with the war, bad situation with, the, with, with Wimbledon making this rule. And now another kind of iffy decision and not, not giving the points, but... You just try to make the best out of a horrible situation. If you were still playing, Mar enough. if you were still playing, Martina, at the top of your game and may even be in the running as you were, of course, many times to win a Wimbledon title, uh, what would you have done if the points weren't there to be won? Would you have taken a view like Naomi Osaka and said, "Well, actually, in that case, I'm not going to play"? Would you have taken a principal stand in support of Russian and Belarusian tennis players? What would your view have been? Do you think? No, I would. Uh, well, first of all, I would. I could care less that there were no points uh, given because I, I always play for the trophies, not the points and not the money. So uh, for me, it was Wimbledon and nothing else, and and everything else came in second. So the points were. Uh, this is not an exhibition. Uh, I I don't understand that view that players wouldn't play because there are no points. So you're playing for computer ranking. Uh, I just wanted to hold that uh, hold that trophy. Uh, that wonderful. And wonderful Venus roast dish. So um, it's, you know, there is no good way out of this, but I don't understand the players that say they don't want to play because of points. Are, this is why you're playing tennis. Right. To get points onto the computer and see your ranking going up or down or whatever. I could have cared less. When I won Wimbledon, I didn't know that I became number one. They, I learned that in the press conference when they told me, by the way, you're number one. I'm like, oh, great. That's just cherry on the cake. Is, I mean, well, Nadia Saka, I've got to say, about, Barely a week goes by without Naomi Osaka whining about something. She's just got all her priorities wrong. 
Should she go back well, to just wanting kind of, to win big trophies and keep quiet? I, well, it's kind of nice if you can walk away from a potential, what, £2 million uh, uh, you know, payday? <laughs> uh, most people don't have that luxury. Uh, but uh, I, I just don't understand that mentality. And, and uh, I would like to sit down with her and, and just tell her about the history of Wimbledon. Uh, and you know the Russian players, Belarusian players. It, this was never would never wouldn't even occur to her that she would not play right. if they were playing and the points weren't taken away. So uh, I I don't understand that mentality. But I you know there's a lot of things that I don't understand these days. Uh, <laughs> well, I think if they all had your winning mentality, trust me, they win a lot more tournaments because you were one of the all-time greats.